All right, we're keeping a very close eye on what's happening in the Middle East right now. Day three of Israeli airstrikes on Hamas targets inside Gaza. That situation being closely watched by the White House. How, in the end, does this end? Dan Gillerman is live in Tel Aviv, a former Israeli ambassador to the U.N. and a Fox News contributor. And, sir, thank you uh, for your time. I think there's a bit of a delay in the satellite, so I'll throw the question out. You go ahead and answer it. Uh, what is considered victory in this operation that's underway? Well, victory in the operation would be considered a totally new security situation on our southern border where the Hamas realizes that Israelis, children and innocents in kindergartens and schools are not targets and are not victims, where they realize that they should take care of their own people rather than harass and try to kill our people. Basically, what we're looking at is an end to violence, an end to rocket shelling. Israel has been under constant rocket attack from Gaza for eight years. In the last three years, we haven't even been there. We vacated Gaza, and we were still constantly barraged by rockets into our cities, into our kindergartens, into our schools. This has to stop. The situation in Gaza the day after this operation will be totally unlike the one it was on the eve of this operation. This is something I promise you. Mm. Hamas is still capable of firing rockets and mortars. In fact, we saw one live on the air uh, 10 minutes ago coming out of Gaza, headed possibly toward the town of Starot. So, so if Hamas still has that ability, uh, even today, how effective has been the first three days of the shelling of Gaza been for the Israelis? This has been very effective. I think the Hamas has been dealt a very, very severe blow. I think they are far from the cockiness which characterized them in the past. I think they've learned a lesson. They obviously still have some capability, and we will see rockets, and we may even see more rockets. This is not a thing which will end quickly. This is not something we thought could end in a day or two. We realize this operation could take time, but it, enough is enough. We will not allow those terrorists to harass our people to harass our children and to endanger our lives. And until they understand it, we will continue to do what any democracy in the world would have done, which I'm sure the United States would have done. Just imagine if Chicago was uh, barraged by rockets from across the border or New Mexico or some other place. What would the Americans do? Send them flowers? We've shown tremendous restraint. We're trying very hard not to hit civilians. You know, the difference between us and them is that for them, every dead Israeli child is a cause for celebration and a victory. For us, every dead Palestinian child is a horrible mistake and a tragedy. But we have to do it. We will continue to do it until there is peace and quiet, both on our southern border and all around Israel. We cannot afford to do anything less than that. Now, part of the reason why the Israelis withdrew from Gaza, it is a small strip of land. It is very crowded. It is difficult to control. The Israelis tried for three decades to do just that. Is there a desire in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem on behalf of the Israelis to reoccupy the Gaza Strip? Absolutely no desire for us to return to Gaza. We don't miss Gaza. We left Gaza with the hope that the Palestinians will for once make the right choice. They could have turned Gaza into a place where you could live and invest and raise your children and have a good quality of life. Instead, they chose to make it a launching pad for missiles into Israel and a terror base. They have taken their own people hostage. The the Palestinians who are being killed today, the innocent ones, who unfortunately may be killed, are killed because they've been held hostage by their own people against, maybe even against their will. And when you have missiles in your homes, and if you go to sleep with a missile, don't be surprised if you don't wake up in the morning. We have no desire to go back to Gaza. We want the Palestinians to govern Gaza, but we want it to be a government that cares about the people, cares about raising their own children rather than killing ours. If that is the case, Mr. Ambassador, does that mean a ground invasion will not happen? I cannot tell you that I'm privy to all the plans of the Israeli military forces. I think that we would prefer this to end without a ground invasion, 
but we are ready for any eventuality. We have prepared for this for a very long time. We've shown great restraint, but the Israeli army is doing what it has to do. Its responsibility and duty is to protect the Israeli people, and this is what it's doing at this very moment. If boots on the ground are necessary, there will be boots on the ground. I hope they won't be necessary, and I also hope the Hamas will get the message before this becomes an all-out war in which the Hamas has everything to lose. We will not stop until the situation in the South becomes normal and quiet and is totally different from the one that prevailed until 11.30 a.m. Israel time on Saturday morning when our restraint came to an end and we went out and did what we had to do and what any country in the world would do under these circumstances. Dan Gillerman is the former U.N. ambassador from Israel to the U.N. here in New York. He comes to us live today in Tel Aviv. Day three, back to David Lee Miller uh, with more reporting along that Gaza-Israeli border throughout the day here on Fox. Thank you, sir. Megan.